Hey guys, so the video I posted a couple weeks ago got a lot of good feedback. You guys seem to really like it. It was the um, full body workout that switched between body weight Tabatas and then weighted circuits. So I'm gonna come out with two more workouts using that same format. This one today, which is focused on upper body and core, and then next week's, which will be focused on legs and glutes. So for a little refresher, the structure is a Tabata, which is eight rounds of 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest. I'll give you four exercises. You'll cycle through them twice. Um, and then we'll switch over to a circuit where we'll add in some equipment. You do each exercise for 60 seconds back to back. There are six exercises total. You're gonna go through that whole thing twice. So it'll go Tabata, circuit, Tabata, circuit. For equipment, you're gonna want a set of weights. I'm using a set of 10 pound dumbbells. Uh, scale up or down to match your fitness level. We'll only use those for a few exercises. And you're also gonna want a pair of sliders. Um, I'll link below to the ones I use. I like these because they're double sided. They have a hard surface that can slide across carpet and then a fabric surface that can slide across hardwood, linoleum, whatever. You can also get creative though. So a dish towel works perfect if you're doing it on hardwood floors. Paper plates work well if you're doing it on carpet. Um, so just look around your house, find anything that slides. As with all workouts, make sure that you're properly warmed up beforehand and always listen to your body modifying or stopping as needed. If you're new to my channel, I don't play music in the background because I want you to be able to listen to whatever music you like. So if you don't have a playlist queued up, I would do that now. Okay, if you are all set and ready to go, the next 20 minutes we are gonna be focusing on upper body and core. I'll give you a little preview of the exercises before we get into it so you know exactly what to expect. Okay, so have your weights ready off to the side. We're not gonna use them right off though. We are going to use our sliders for that twisted pike march. Doesn't matter which side you start on, but if you wanna do the same as me, left foot in front of right. Keeping the legs straight, you're gonna pike the hips up towards the ceiling. You're gonna lower them back down to that twisted plank position, and then you're gonna do a march. It's just right forearm and then back up to two hands. So we're never lowering onto the left forearm. It's the same side each time. So these are tricky and they definitely get harder as the minute goes on. If you need to modify, you could always take out the march or maybe just do it after every two or three reps instead of every time. If your wrists start to bother you, another option for modifying would be to just come to your forearms and just do the twisted pike down on your forearms. Remember, during this circuit, it's not about how many reps you get in. I care about quality over quantity. So go slow, focus on form. If it starts to get sloppy, just hold in that paw, in that plank for a couple seconds and then get back to it. You're almost to the end, guys. You're going to hear the beeps and then it's on to Russian twist. Okay, so now I want you to grab the weights, both medium weights if possible. If you need to modify, though, just use one. And then if you need to modify further, you can just do body weight. From here, you're going to be balancing on your tailbone. You're going to lean back with the torso slightly, roll the shoulder blades down your back, chest stays broad, and you're going to start twisting, bringing the weights to the outside of your hip. Another way to modify this one if you need to would be to keep your heels on, lightly on the floor instead of having them hovering. If you have tight hip flexors and it's uncomfortable to hold this position, also try crossing one foot over the other and switching about halfway through. We're nearing the end of this one. Keep it going. Up next, we're going to do that twisted pike march on the other side. 
Okay, put the weights off to the side for now. We're gonna need our sliders. If you're on the same side as me, you're gonna do right foot in front of left. Again, doesn't matter, just do the other side, whatever you didn't do that first exercise. I am purposely taking my sweet ass time getting into this position because this exercise is hard. Um, but as soon as you're ready, hands under those shoulders, right foot in front of left, keeping the legs straight. We're gonna pike the hips up and down. And we're gonna do that single-sided march. If you're on the same side as me, it is left forearm down and then back to two straight hands two straight arms. Again, March is on the same side every time. So quality over quantity here. I don't care how many reps you get in, but I want you to think about staying active in the exercise the whole time. So take those modifications we went over if you need to. You could come to forearms. If your wrists are bothering you, you could maybe just do the march every two or three reps. Um, but let's try not to drop all together. Maybe you just hold that twisted plank for a few breaths. Almost there, guys. At the beeps, you're going to grab one of your weights. All right, we're moving into a full body crunch. Um, you're just going to use one weight, and if you need to modify, you can do body weight. You'll start laying on your back with your legs extended to a hover and the weight extended overhead, and then you're going to crunch everything up and in. Now, when you extend out to that hover, I want you to get your legs about six inches off the ground, but then adjust up or down as needed. The lower your legs are extended to in that hover, the harder it's going to be. But I don't want your low back to arch off the ground. So if you're feeling that low back peel up to the ceiling, just extend your legs a little higher. Way better to keep them higher and keep that neutral spine. Nearing the end of this one, try to get in one or two more reps. All right, and we're gonna stand it up now. We're gonna come into some isolated upper body exercises. You're gonna need both weights. We're gonna start with a row to reverse fly combo. So feet about hips width apart, soft bend to the knees. I want you to hinge forward with your upper body, hips back. Knit your ribs together. Your core needs to stay in tight on this one. And then from there, you're gonna row, driving the elbows back, and then fly, opening them up wide. Kind of like the opposite of giving someone a hug. You're pulling away. Now, the fly is gonna be a little harder than the row. If it starts to get to be too much, notice how I'm adding in two rows in between each fly. Good. This is one that it can be helpful to sync up with the breath. Think of exhaling during the exertion as you open those arms up in the fly. Just a few more seconds to go. All right, we're moving into our last exercise, bicep circle curls. So you're going to keep your forearms parallel to each other, and you're tracing a big circle as you curl up to the side, down, and around. Every time your arms are lowered, you're going to switch direction. Now, anytime you do standing upper body work, you need to make sure that you have proper form throughout the rest of the body. Yes, focus is arms, but we got to tune into our core and legs as well. I need a soft bend of the knees. Don't lock out through them. And then I need you to hold in tight through the core. So we're not tilting our pelvic bone forward and arching into the low back. Instead, you're pulling up and in through the low abs, knitting those ribs together. Make sure that your chest stays broad on this one so you don't want the weights to hunch your shoulders forward. So roll those shoulder blades down your back. Almost there, guys. You just have a few more seconds to go, and then you are done with this first round of the circuit. All right, while you rest, I'm going to show you what to expect from your Tabata. Okay, unlike the circuit, speed is a factor here with the Tabata, so I'm going to choose to do the tricep push-ups from my knees because, quite frankly, from my feet, I cannot do them very quickly. <laughs> so pick whichever level works best for you, and then as you bend and straighten through the arms, you want to keep the elbows in tight to the sides of your body so they're shooting straight back. So kind of think chaturanga-like in yoga. Remember, we're going to go 20 seconds on, 10 seconds rest. The goal here, as many reps as you can within the 20 seconds without losing proper form. All right, 10 seconds rest. 
Coming up next, you're going to roll onto your back. We're going to take this into V up. So you're going to extend your arms and legs out to a hover. And you're going to think of bringing your body into a V shape, hands towards the feet. Now, if you need to modify these, do them with bent knees. So you would just be crunching the knees into your chest as you do the sit up with the upper body. Few more to go. And rest. We're going to go to a plank position and we're going to take it to good old fashioned mountain climbers. So it's like horizontal running. We're going to drive the knees in towards our chest. So again, speed, I want you to go quick. The goal is to get the heart rate up during these intervals. So you're driving one knee in and then the next. You want to make sure that your hips are staying right around shoulder height so we don't let our butt pike up into the air. Run it out. You are well over halfway. Just a few more seconds to go. And rest. Okay, last exercise is going to be surfer get up. So it's kind of like the bottom of a burpee. Start in a squat position with one foot in front of the other, and you're going to jump into a plank, lowering your chest all the way to the ground, and then you're going to push up and jump back to your feet, this time with the other foot in front. So it's a full body exercise, but you're going to feel your core and arms really work as you push yourself off the ground. And rest. Okay, so we're at the halfway point. We're just going to go through those four exercises one more time. So we're going to get into that push-up position. Again, if you have the upper body strength, definitely do them from your feet. Um, I tend to do them very slow from my feet. I'm still working on that. So I'm going to do them modified from my knees. And you're going to go. your goal is to get as many reps in as possible. Now, don't lose connection to the core. So you want to knit those ribs together. Abs are in tight. We're not letting the low back sag down and rest. V-up's coming up next, so make your way onto your back. Now, hands are reaching towards the toes. I have pretty tight hamstrings, so as you can see, my hands are falling by the shins. That's absolutely fine. Um, you just want the goal here, just get the legs up and that back off the floor. And rest. Okay, we got two more work intervals to go, and then this Tabata is over. We are going to go to those mountain climbers next. So you're going for speed here. I want you to drive the knees up as high as you can, really crunching in through the core, and you really pick up the pace. So as soon as one knee's in, the other one starts driving. Back and forth, back and forth. Almost there, guys. A few more seconds. Push. If you can add any speed to it, now's the time to do it and rest. All right, we got one more interval to go. It's going to be those surfer get-ups. So when you hop up to your feet, try not to pause there too long. Get the hands off the ground so that the weight does shift into your legs for that second, but then it's right back down chest to the floor. And done. All right, I'm going to give you a preview of the circuit, even though we've already done it, just to give you some time to rest. We're going to do that whole thing one more time. You are a pro at it now. We're going to start with that twisted pike with a march. If you want to do the same side as me to keep things easy, left foot in front of right. And the march you're lowering onto your right forearm and back up to your hand. And now these were tough the first time around. I am already struggling through this second set of them. But again, our goal is continuous movement for the 60 seconds. It doesn't need to be fast. I'm looking for quality reps. And if you need to modify, do so, but try to stay active. That could mean just holding the twisted plank. That is fine.
You're almost there. See if you can get in one or two more reps at the beeps. You can put those sliders aside and we will grab our weights. All right, Russian twist time. So if you can use both medium weights so that it's heavy, this should be challenging. Um, but if you need to modify, just tone it down a notch. Use, just use one weight or use none. We're kind of balancing on our tailbone here. We tilt back through the torso slightly and we lift those heels off the ground. Uh, remember a couple tips. If you have really tight uh, hip flexors and this is super uncomfortable, try crossing at the ankles. That helps. Um, and then if you need to modify further, try having your heels down lightly on the floor. When you twist, I want a deep twist, so really bring the weights all the way to the outside of the hips. You have a few more seconds to go here, um, and then we're going to go back to that twisted pike with the march. I know it's no fun, but we got to do it on the other side. All right, put the weights aside. This time it's going to be right foot in front of left. Um, once again, I'm taking my sweet time getting there <laughs> because it's hard. Don't be like me, though. Hop right into it. You're in your playing position, right foot in front of left. The march is going to happen by lowering onto your left forearm and back up. Remember, if the march is getting to be too much, you can take it out. Or maybe you just do the march after every two or three pikes. That is okay, too. Fine with you modifying this one. It is a tough one. Just remember, we are staying active. And the good news is you are so close to the end. Those beeps are going to go off, and we are done with the sliders for good. All right, let's take it to our full body crunch. So you're just going to need one weight for this. Modification, don't use a weight. Start in that extended hovering position, so legs are about six inches off the ground, weight is overhead, and then we bring everything in, bringing the weight kind of to our shins. Now remember, when you go to the hover, um, you want to get your legs low. You want to challenge yourself, of course, but if you're getting your legs so low that your low back is arching up to the ceiling, that's no good, and I'd much rather you just lower your legs to an angle. Aim for two, maybe three reps. At the beeps, we are going to stand it up. All right. We want both weights here. We are going to do a row to a reverse fly. You're standing in a bent, slightly hinged forward position. So feet about hips width apart, soft bend of the knees, slide your hips back, hinge forward, core in tight. So I need you to knit the ribs together and pull the belly button in tight to the spine. If we forget to engage through the core, you're going to feel this in a bad way in your back, and we don't want that. We want to strengthen the back on this one, not strain the low back. Now, as those flies get harder and harder, again, you can do a couple rows in between each one, which you'll notice I start doing here off and on. Um, we're typically stronger with the row straight back than we are with the fly. All right, on to our final exercise, and then you are done with the circuit. So we're going to do those bicep circle curls. Palms face up, forearms stay parallel to each other, and you're curling up to one side, around, down to the other side. When the arms are extended down by your hips, that's when you switch direction. All right, let's check in on our form here. So we want to stand up right with good posture. So roll your shoulders down your back. Your chest is broad. Ribs knit in, low abs up and in. Soft bend to the knees. So we don't, it, what happens when we do standing arm work and we lock out the knees is we tend to tilt the pelvic bone forward and put pressure in the low back. So it's amazing what just that little difference, a little softness to the knees can make.
Stick with it, guys. We are getting there. After this, you are done with the weights, and you'll just have one more Tabata to go, and then the whole workout is done. All right. Again, I know what you. I know that you know what to expect from the Tabata, but I'm just going to show you again so you have time to rest. Okay, four minutes to go, and then you are done with this workout. So we're going to do that Tabata that we've already seen. One more time, we start with push-ups. So form is always top priority, but after that, speed is the focus for this Tabata. You want to get your heart rate up during the work intervals. Over halfway there, keep it going. And again, I'm doing them from my knees, but if you can do them from your feet quickly, then do that and rest. We're going to flip onto our backs. We're going to take it to V up. So similar setup to that weighted version we were doing in the circuit, but now just body weight. When you extend out to that hover, think of pulling your belly button down towards the floor. So we don't want that low back to arch up to the ceiling. If you need to modify do these with bent knees instead of straight legs. It'll be a little easier. A few more seconds to go here and rest. Okay, two down, six to go. We're going to take it into mountain climbers, so you're going to find that plank position, hands stacked under shoulders, get ready to run it out. So as you do these, make sure your hips are staying at about shoulder height and your shoulders are staying right over those wrists. and rest. Okay, now we're going to take it to those surfer get-ups. So start in that low squat position, one foot in front of the other. Called surfer get-ups because, as I'm sure you've put together, when you jump up and have that one foot in front, it's kind of like you're jumping up onto a surfboard. Not that I know what that would uh, entail because I've never surfed before, but you get the deal. and rest. Okay, so we got to go through those four exercises just one more time, and then you can check this workout off the list. You will be done. Let's go to those push-ups. So as you can see, my pace is slowing down a little bit. Uh, you want to go quick and you want continuous movement, but prioritize form. If your low back is starting to arch to the ground and these are getting sloppy, slow it down. Next up, we have those V-ups, arms and legs extend out. So think explosive movement on the way up and control on the way down. You have just a few more seconds to go. Try to get in a couple more reps and rest. All right, two more work intervals to go. We are onto those mountain climbers. Find your plank position and take off. We are so close to the end of this workout, guys. If you have any more to give, I want you to pick up the pace just a little bit for these last few seconds. Really drive those knees and run it out. You're almost there, almost to those beeps. Keep it going and rest. Okay, you have one more 20-second interval to go. Going to be those surfer get-ups. And go. Over halfway there, you can do it. Can you pick up the pace? Try to get in one, maybe two more reps. And done. All right, guys, I hope that workout challenged you as much as it challenged me. My upper body was toast by the end. Um, if you like this workout, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will be back here next week with same structure, but focusing on lower body, legs and glutes. All right, see you next week.